Good morning to each of you. Thank you for taking a couple of moments this morning and spending a little time with us. Appreciate you doing that, and I don't take it for granted today. Uh, have a little something on my heart, and I'm sure that it is based upon the fact of events that have taken place this week. Yesterday, um, I had the privilege of serving a family and, and preaching another funeral. Uh, it seems as a pastor that comes way too often, but yet on the spiritual realm, we understand it is the victory of this life, the celebration of the fact that another child of God has reached home, and with that thought, we celebrate that and we rejoice in that today. But what that also does this morning is that produces a certain uh, level of understanding of the uncertainty of life. The fact that it is appointed to each of us that um, we're going to live this life, but it is also appointed unto us that we are going to die. And that's really the topic I want to talk to you about this morning, and it's not a topic that I want to produce negativity in our life because we as children of God believe that that is one of the greatest opportunities that we'll ever have and that is to end this present life and step into the next life. Now the reality of that is uh, there is a great deal of anxiety that oftentimes comes with those thoughts because we love the present so much. We love the life that we're now living. We love and embrace the privilege we have to enjoy our family, our friends, our neighbors, our loved ones. But the certainty of this life is that it is appointed unto man once to die. And the Bible declares after that the judgment. So this morning as we think about the reality that this life is going to end, we must think about the fact of eternity. And friend, I wouldn't be much of a pastor today if all I ever shared with you was great news and good news and celebrated the goodness and the blessings of God unless I also took a moment of time this morning and shared with you about the reality of life after death. And you and I are going to live somewhere. And I'm thankful that our Lord Jesus Christ came and, and made a way that each of us, all of us, every one of us, have an opportunity to embrace the forgiveness of our Lord Jesus Christ to enter into a relationship with Him, accept Him as our Lord and Savior. You see, because I believe that eternity is not based upon religion. Matter of fact, if you were to ask me today, I'm just really not that much of a religious guy because, you see, I believe that religion is bound by heresy. I believe that religion is bound by uh, idolatry, if you will, because many times we feel like that if we do certain things or if we act a certain way, then somehow, some way we'll become pleasing to God and therefore be able to earn in some way a right into eternal life. But can I just share with you today that the Bible declares unto us that no man cometh unto the Father except through and by Jesus Christ his Son? Friend, can I share with you today the only way to go to heaven, the only way to be able to experience the joy of the, of the bliss of a wonderful place that we identify as heaven is to be in relationship with a man named Jesus. It's not about how good I can be or uh, can I be perfect in this area, can I grow enough in an area of my life where I can be pleasing to God because the Bible says that God created man, that's you and I, in his own image. And so can I just share with you today that what God desires out of you and I is just simply a relationship uh, where we love him, honor him, respect him, standing in awe of the God that we serve, but also understand today that he's paid the price for our salvation and that you and I can join him at a level of expectation today to know that God is for us. God is not against us. Uh, God is our greatest fan. And matter of fact, I even heard one preacher say it like this, and it kind of tickled my fancy, if you will. He said, we're simply the apple of his eye. Can I just tell you today that Jesus Christ, the Son of the only uh, of God today, the only begotten Son, He thought you were to die for? And friend, that's not on some level where one day you reach a place of perfection, but that's where you're at right now. With all the blemishes of, of sin, with all the problems of this present life, with all the things that maybe you or I would look in the mirror and categorize ourselves and say, you know, I'm falling short here, I have shortcomings here, I'm, I'm a failure here. But God so loved the world that He gave His one and only begotten Son that whosoever, 
That means me as a failure. That means me when I'm falling short. Yes, friend, he loved you and I so much that he gave his one and only life that you and I might have life and have it more abundantly. So today I want to speak to you and celebrate the abundance of the life that Jesus Christ has paid for for you and I. Friend, he loves you today. And he don't love you today based upon the good that you've done. He don't love you today based upon how well you have performed or how well you may have acted in certain situations this week. No, Jesus loves you and I today. And he loves us just like we are. Now, can I also say that he loves us too much to leave us like we are? And he said that I come that you might have life, not just life, not leave you in the life that you are now with your shortcomings and your sin and the failures of this present life. But he said, I come that you have life and that you have it more abundantly. That abundant life that he's talking about is the newness that we can live in in Jesus Christ. So today we celebrate the fact that we can be born again. We can be in relationship with him. We can share and know the love of God. So as we bring this thought to a close this morning, I just want to say to you today, I love you and God loves you. And if you don't have a place to celebrate the love of God in your life, I just want to tell you doing life by yourself is a dangerous thing. Could I just encourage you to come down Altry Mill Road? The address is 2271 Altry Mill Road, Godwin, North Carolina. We're out in the Clement community. We'd be so glad and honored and privileged to see you. When you walk through these doors of this bridge building, the very first thing that's going to happen, you're going to be embraced by people just like yourself. Yes, people with failures and shortcomings and mistakes and sin in their life, but yet they're seeking a relationship with a Heavenly Father that is able, the Word says, to do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond that that we could even think or imagine. Yes, friend, that's the God we serve today, and we'd be so excited to have you come on this journey with us Come down Ultra Mill Road. Be a part of a family of people that are just like you, imperfect people striving to be like a perfect God. Friend, I want to encourage you today as we close out this quick segment this morning. And I want to tell you today that God loves you this morning. And He don't love you based upon things that you might have done or might not have done this week. But He loves you today because He created you in His own image. And He loved you so much that He gave that one and only begotten Son that each of us could have life and have it more abundantly. So could I encourage you today, wherever you find yourself on the journey of life, embrace that abundant life today. Embrace the Son of God today. His name is Jesus. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Can I encourage you right there today? May God richly bless you till I see you again. Thank you for joining us this morning. God bless you all. Pastor Eddie.